to us. Absolutely. We have got Dr. Gregory Jans with us. He's a PhD. He's the best-selling author of a lot of different books, including Hope, Help, and Healing for Eating Disorders. And he's the founder of the Center for Counseling and Health Resources uh, in Seattle, Washington. And he's got this new book called Hooked, The Pitfalls of Media Technology and Social Networking. And uh, I can't remember what you call the pound sign there. That's a the little hashtag. A little hashtag. Hashtag hooked. There you go. That's the, for the, all the Twitter friends out there. And Dr. Uh, Jance, we're glad to have you on the program today. Welcome to today's oh, issues. Good to be with you. Uh, hooked is an important topic. Uh, yes. Uh, you, do you have your device with you? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I got it right in my you, pocket. You, well, hey. Uh, Dr. Chance, Ray Pritchard here. John has his in his pocket. Mm-hmm. We are we're doing this interview, but I'm holding my <laughs> iPhone in my hand. I need to get mine out as, as I am talking to you. That's how. And before we came on the air, John and I were talking how wired in and wired up we are. And I got to confess to you, Doc. The first thing I did when I got up this morning was, I mean, the very first thing. I didn't even check my email. I went to my computer to check my Facebook and my Twitter. Is that a good? Oh thing? my goodness! I know. I'm, gl- I'm glad we're I'm glad we're talking this morning. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think I, I think I need an intervention. Uh, yeah, here. we thought we could give us some therapy here on the air or something. Well, let me just tell you, you're <laughs> like about 48 percent of women who are on Facebook mm-hmm. this morning did just what you did. They got up. Now I'm I'm in Seattle, so the, um, these women got up and did not have a cup of coffee, no Starbucks. Right. And uh, they went uh, right to their computer, right to Facebook. That's the first thing they did. Well, I, I, I'm right with them, wow. Doc. I mean, right with them. So, so <laughs> tell us, uh, in, in your judgment, I mean, the, the subtitle of your book is The Pitfalls of Media Technology and Social Networking, but we're all, we are all so wired mm-hmm. in today. Is, uh, is social networking, Facebook and Twitter and Google Circles and all the rest of it, LinkedIn, is it a net positive or a net negative, or is it just here to stay and we got to learn how to deal with it? Well, it can go either way. It can be an extreme negative, or obviously if we can find that place of balance, we can use it for good. Uh, but there is a dark side. There's a downside. And, you know, what we're seeing right now, the average age of exposure to pornography on the Internet is age 11. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Terrible. So we take that, uh, and just recently here, just a survey uh, yesterday, 87% of men uh, admitted to seeing pornography on the Internet in the last 30 days. Hmm. Well, oh. uh, if we do that statistically, that's 9 out of 10 men. Oh, tragic. So see, there, see, there's a dark side. We have got kids uh, in 7th and 8th grade who are sex texting. They're sending pictures of themselves inappropriately back and forth. Uh, so we've got the intensity of, of the technology, the availability of pornography, and, and so there is a side to this that we've got to got to look at and be aware, and, and also to be able to uh, deal with this successfully in our families. You know, it, let me ask you a question about something that's that, that's been in the news the last couple of months: the question about movies and gaming and violent mm-hmm. behavior, especially after the Sandy Hook massacre, that, that question came front and center. Is there some kind of link between these extremely violent video games and actual acting out violent behavior? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, frankly, the research is a little bit mixed on that. But what we do know, uh, and you can make it go either way, uh, I personally don't like the first-person per- shooter games. I don't see any benefit from that, how, how that's possibly helpful. The other factor that we do know is kids and teenagers, a predictor of violence is that they feel that they are uh, persecuted. They feel that they're in some ways been bullied, they're persecuted. You take a persecuted teenager, overexposure to violent video games, and it's a setup. Hmm. Yes. Wow. So it's, it's, it's a concern. And, you know, and we need to also say, you know what, there's a really good side to this as well. Um, but I think as parents, we need to look at, you know, there's no reason for a sixth or seventh grade boy to be on Facebook having girls, uh, you know, liking him with friends, uh, texting a girl. You're setting up a whole um, future ticking time bomb. What about, um, you know, giving uh, so many young people that I know of have their smartphones. And with yes. the smartphones, a lot of them have data plans, <laughs> unlimited access to the yes. Internet. What about, what about that? Well, here's our rule, and our, I have two boys, they're 10 and 13. Our rule is you don't text a girl, you don't text before school, 
uh, mom and dad can review your text. Anything you download on your phone is going to show up on mine, and we're going to always talk. <laughs> so you better get permission, <laughs> okay? And and we're going to talk about and um, what's appropriate. Um, really, in these early ages, you got a 13 year old son, and you got hormones raging. Um, it's just a setup. And kids are doing more than you ever imagined. Uh, of course, we work with situations from around the country uh, who come in for help. Um, and i got to tell you, parents are almost every time shocked at what their kids were doing they had no idea of. We're talking with Dr. Greg Jantz. Uh, he's the author of many books, including a brand-new book called Hashtag Hooked. Hooked? Subtitled, The Pitfalls of Media Technology and Social Networking, published by Siloam. Uh, Dr. Jantz, uh, back to those 48% of the women, plus me, yeah. <laughs> plus me, plus everybody else sure. who got up early this morning and, and we skipped Starbucks and we went right to Facebook and Twitter. Uh, lay it on us. What are some of the signs maybe that we've become too dependent in a negative way on on media, on the Internet, on social technology? Well, one of the things that you need to look at is, and by the way, I should give the age range for those women. The fastest growing users of Facebook, about 35 uh, women in their early 40s, and that's the women that got up this morning, and they're looking for connection, they're looking for relationship, they're looking for those emotional needs to be met through an online medium. And that's why they went to Facebook before having a cup of coffee. Right, <laughs> okay. right. Um, but here's, here's uh, really, we need to, well, how do I know if I have a problem? You know what? If you're sleeping with your smartphone, mm. uh, 54% of Americans admitted to either sleeping with their smartphone or having it on their nightstand. Well, I do. <laughs> okay, uh -oh. John, see, I don't <laughs> okay, get in okay. trouble. Okay, John, I don't do that. So, <laughs> oh, right, boy. All right. So, okay, I'm feeling slightly better yeah, now, I'm in Doc, trouble. Slightly better. <laughs> well, yeah, and here's the thing, you know. Decide what your what your rules around technology are in the mm. home. You know, we had to, what we did is our smartphones are on the charger eight o'clock in the kitchen area, and if it's not there, you know, if you have kids by uh, we've said eight o'clock. That's what works for our household. Um, you won't have it the next day, and that's good. Um, you know, we everything is uh, open. Passwords are are are, are mm. not hidden. There's no such thing as hiding things. It's a transparent. The problem with the technology with kids is when you allow secrets and secret messaging, and we've got a whole series of issues going on with Facebook with private messaging and private conversations going on that parents don't know that's going on, for example. Yeah. Um, so what we want to do is, is talk about this. Now, remember, our kids are way ahead of us, and we know that this is organic, meaning that it's always changing. There's always a new app, and there's always something new out there. I mean, I've got a kid who's son who's 13, and you know he was um, uh, not allowed to have his devices here for a bit, and you know, he's he's retooling an old um, an old Kindle, getting an internet connection, and doing free texting. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Our kids are smart, they are. And, and and let's not let's you know get out of denial and and just understand they're living in a different world than we did. Hey, you mm -hmm. use an interesting phrase in your book called continuous partial attention what what yeah. what what's that all about <laughs> oh it's kind of a funny word isn't it continuous yeah. partial attention yeah. well have you ever been to lunch with somebody uh, hopefully you know <laughs> well you probably have them um, and you're having lunch and they they're texting while they're talking to you and um, <laughs> they look up at you and they, and they go uh, what did you just say <laughs> you know that's partial attention it's partial distraction. If I'm partially distracted, I only have partial attention. Ultimately, that devalues our relationships. That doesn't make the person you're with feel all that important if you are texting and then you ask them to repeat something they said. Um, so it's technologies invading our real relationships. Mm. Um, we need to look at that. So uh, what we do is we're really working on, okay, and I have to do a self-confession. I knew I had a problem a while back when we were sitting around the dinner table and my two boys have got their devices and they're texting each other at the dinner table. Oh, yeah. They go, <laughs> oh, my gosh, what is going on here? <laughs> they are texting each other wow. at the dinner table a couple of feet apart. This okay, is more common good. than we think. Yes. This yes. is more common than we think. Yes. yes. It, it is. It is. 
<laughs> so I just want to, you know, I'm, I've, I've learned um, <laughs> and, and keep learning. And I've had, that's why I say it's always changing. And so, you know, our rules and boundaries around technology are, and could be different next week because it keeps modifying. It's not always black and white. Uh, and a lot of this is we need to remember if we overstimulate, this is the problem with the games, if you're overstimulating an 8, 9, 10-year-old kid uh, and it's uh, too much stimulation on that brain, um, later on it creates what we call a craving brain. You have a brain that's craving more and more stimulation. Well, that's a setup for an addicted brain. Hmm. Wow. So, I mean, we're learning so much about the good side of technology and, and some high, uh, you know, kind of a, a dark side or a flip side of it that we need to look at and go, okay, um, what do I need to do to keep this healthy? Listening to today's issues, I'll just let everybody know uh, uh, who our guest is, Dr. Gregory Jantz, Ph.D., and the book is called Hooked, with the little hashtag there in front of it, The Pitfalls of Media Technology and Social Networking, and you can uh, get a hold of him. Your website, is it Gregory Jantz? Well, actually, you want to go on to aplaceofhope.com, okay. aplaceofhope.com, aplace and there is some great information, some free information about this very topic. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Uh Dr. Jantz, in your book, you talk about people with a type A personality. Well, yes. yes. <laughs> and, and so I can, I can relate here. Uh, you say that today's tech industry, um, well, the, the, all that they're doing, all that the tech companies are doing, it's really made for people. Mm-hmm. I just like people like me, mm-hmm. people with a type A kind of personality. What exactly do, do you mean? And is that good news or bad news? Well, it really fuels that sense of urgency. You know, technology makes everything urgent. Mm-hmm. I can hit I can hit uh, urgent on any email, and it may or may not be, you know. Uh, a text message, for most people, demands an immediate response. Mm-hmm. So it creates a sense of urgency. So you're you're a good type A personality, and you got all this coming at you, all these tennis balls being thrown at you. Um, it can be a, a point eventually of overload. Mm-hmm. And, and we really can... can well, we develop what I call low impulse control. Um, we live in a one-click society, and it's just low impulse control. We're not controlling our impulse. We're not delaying gratification. And it's, uh, it ends up being kind of chaotic living. Well, what about the person who says, look, it's okay with all these balls up in the air. I'm a multitasker. I hear that a lot. Mm-hmm. I've, I've said that myself. I can do a lot of different things at once. But But you say this whole thing about multitasking that uh, really that's just an illusion it's not really true you know the multitasking when we look at some of the studies on this they, what we call heavy multitaskers people like you and me that thought we could do everything right <laughs> right that that's us <laughs> and then we take a test on what we actually recalled and we try to recall and we actually score pretty low and so the heavy multitaskers uh, have that partial distraction. They think they're getting it. They think they're doing well. But when we actually test them, they really don't have good recall. There's only one exception to that, and that's uh, uh, women score a little bit better on, on heavy multitasking than men. Oh, wow. Sorry. Somehow that doesn't surprise me, nor, but it doesn't encourage me at all. Yes, I know. Oh, Talking to uh, Dr. Gregory Jantz, and the book is called Hooked, with a little hashtag in front of it, The Pitfalls of Media Technology and Social Networking. And again, um, uh, Dr. Jantz, where can you get the book? Well, you can get it anywhere, hopefully, but uh, go to a, um, a website, a, a place, put the A in there, aplaceofhope.com. aplaceofhope.com. You know, the, the question of teenagers and texting, you make the comment, which I certainly have observed is true, that teenagers are actually more apt to text their friends, as you said, even at the mm-hmm. dinner table, rather than talking on the phone or talking in person. Why has texting become so incredibly popular? Well, that's it's a whole new way of communicating. It's got its own language. It's got its own code. And uh, I remember not long ago, I called my son on the phone, and he didn't answer. And then I get a text back from him, Dad, what do you want? Yep, there you go. That <laughs> happens all the time to me, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, the new communi- it's the new communication, <laughs> but, you know, if all our text relationships are text and relationships, we don't go through the normal relationship stages. Um, we always create an urgency. Um, I, have a, I have a gal, you know, we work with folks who come in and 